The mysteries in Doom Eternal keep coming in. There are many things in the story which are not explained. This tends to us developing theories and possible connections with the information we do have. But like many things we come across, these things could have a backstory, or perhaps just placed into the game on purpose with no actual meaning and maybe just part of its design. But I'd like to think not everything is placed in a game just for the sake of level design. I do think some objects have a connection to the full story, something we have yet to unravel. While most of the story has been flushed out in the Codex entries, we learned about the elemental race, the Sentinel people, the Khan Maker and her city of Erdak, the disappearance of Father, who was the creator of the Maker race, his essence was stolen by a maker named Samur. He was the same person who blessed the Doomslayer with incredible power and speed from within the Divinity Machine. Samur Maker was also known as the mysterious hooded figure, the Seraphim. The story also gave us details on how the Khan Maker travels to many worlds, spreading her beliefs upon other cultures and offering their souls eternal peace in Erdak. But something was kept in secret from everyone. The secret was the pact the conmaker made with the Dark Lord. She would help them overtake worlds. Hell would consume them. Then soul extractor and soul spires were erected. The tortured souls would be combined with wraith power to form Argent Energy. This energy source would be used by the conmaker to extend her natural lifespan. With no trace of Father's essence within the Luminarium, no successor to the Khan lineage would be created. This is why she formed a deal with the Dark Lord. So this brings up the topic of those human-like bodies seen on Erdak. After you align the third ring, you will go through a hallway. Here, you will find transparent images of what looks like a human being, or possibly a version of a human being, with tubes going into its back. And once again, this is left as a big mystery. What is this? Maybe the con maker was experimenting with human DNA, trying to come up with a new species. Or is that DNA from a person who was on Argent Denur or some other world? I wonder if part of this process was used by the maker drones in some way. It's hard to say. There's really no data available. But the only link I could find is that the symbol above these human-like bodies is also seen in other areas of Erdak. In the next area, there's a giant body kept under some liquid. I went over this topic in another video, but I wanted to expand on a few ideas. The first thing we notice is the color of the liquid. You can see shades of pink and purple, along with some type of residue at the surface. If you look closely, you can see a layer of mist above this liquid. If you look around this area, you will see steam emitting from this liquid. This could mean the temperature of this liquid is warm, or there's some kind of chemical reaction. But what is this purple liquid? Well, it could be tissue or blood that exited the body some time ago, or it could be some type of fluid meant to preserve the body. So let's say, for the sake of this theory, they are preserving the body. But when was it placed there? What is its purpose? It could have been the first con maker body, then its genetic makeup was used to create future cons. If it is the first one, it would be millions of years old. Considering what the Codex says, the makers could have had religious impact on mortal beings for millions of years. Its chest area is also different, it's more organic. The bulge is part of its body, very different from the con maker we see in the story. If we look at the ending scene, the chest area of the conmaker is taken up by that glowing orb, which must be its essence or soul. But that orb is deep into her chest, so there must be no room for this organic bulge if she has one, or it must be very small. What do you think this being is? Do you think it's related to the conmakers? Is it the physical form of the father from long ago? Could it be the conmaker that was supposed to replace the current one? Or was it a cloned body to be used in some way, but then preserved when their plans changed? Another interesting feature is the large appendages on its back. It's like it was fully grown, but its purpose seems to be unclear. 
the con maker in the story has mechanical wings, but even if it's just body armor, it clearly shows that her appendages are extremely small or not fully developed as the creature underneath. Another theory is that this could have been a future body for the current con maker, since her body was starting to go through the transfiguration process, and with the disappearance of father, they could not create another successor to her. Maybe she had this large body planned as a backup plan. She could have decided to transfer her essence into it, but before that could happen, she discovered Argent Energy, which could be used to extend her lifespan. Then, the body was left there and preserved over time. Maybe this body could be used in the future somehow. Another theory is that you could also say it might be the father. In some stories, an almighty being would give up their life to create beings in their image, which could also be a copy of him or her. So is it possible this could have been the living form of the father? It's hard to say, but the Codex does have some connection to this. When it says this, father may have been a singular being that split to form the maker race, or his essence or power was transferred into the structure known as Erdak. If that's the case, could this room be the birthplace of every con maker? Let's move on to the Fortress of Doom. Why has the Doomslayer taken control of this area? Well, the Sentinel people did travel to other worlds. Their empire could expand past Argenta. The design of the fortress shows that it was made for the Sentinel military, despite some of its parts being of maker technology. It seems like after the Civil War ended, this fortress was abandoned or left behind, and the Doomslayer used it as his base of operations when he returned. Another thing I noticed is, when you use the demonic crucible to power the fortress of doom, you can see a pillar of argent energy from the crucible and going through Samuel Hayden. But when you complete the campaign and go back to this area, the energy flowing through Samuel is now gone. What could this mean? Has Samuel already been corrupted by the crucible, as it was said in the prophecy? Let's look back at one specific phrase of that prophecy. It says this, when it says, another shall rise from the fires, this could mean someone who is defeated but will rise again. The part about a dark priest consumed by the crucible. A priest can be seen as someone you go to for guidance, a sense of direction, or a path that you seek. In some way, Samuel was filling that spot as a priest, guiding the slayer on his missions, so he might be the person linked to that part of the prophecy. One last thing is a possible piece of lore about the Archvile. I did cover the history and origins of its design back in 2018. It was an extensive look into how it was created, and how it changed over the various Doom games. But with the release of Doom Eternal, we can see it was given a new ability. It can now raise a fire shield that blocks incoming attacks. This idea could have been taken or inspired from the Doom novels. It mentions how a fire demon with similar powers generated a heat field. It would dissolve bullets before they went through. So that's it for this video. If you have any feedback or theories you can contribute, just put it down in the comments section. It's great to discuss these topics and share ideas together, so we can get various angles of how some mysteries could go. If there's a specific topic you want me to cover, just leave it in the comments section as well. Who would have thought that the lore of Doom would go this deep, all while still leaving us with a bunch of questions? If you want to see more videos about the lore of Doom, then all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. Over the past two years, I've covered a lot of lore within the Doom universe. I have a playlist with a ton of lore content. I even branch out into other franchises that I like, so check it out as you might find something else of interest. Thanks for watching. My name is Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.